Hey there, happy day 1113 of what you have to know. Sharon Hornell from here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world. Today happens to be Valentine's Day, so I put a couple of hearts around and I had a heart filter, but it blew my head up to giant and that always irritates me. So instead of being frustrated the whole thing and just looking at part of my head, I shut it off and started over. I might have used a curse word when I did it because I was like, come on, really? It was a long title and I didn't want to type it in again. Lazy, I know. So today, what's going on? NGT, if you don't know what NGT is, NGT stands for Nominal Group Technique. And I don't know if it really does, but NGT is a lot easier to write out for me than nominal group technique. And it's just a tool that we talked about in the Get Up and Go Challenge today. And I demonstrated how you can take and <clears throat> take a subjective thing, something that's hard to, because there's not a lot of facts involved, to make a decision about and a choice about, and how you can make it more objective by rating your thoughts about it, your head, your feelings about it, your heart, and your your instinct about it, your gut, your intuition, by rating those on a scale of one to 10, you can take and you can quantify something that normally isn't really quantifiable in order to compare dissimilar options and choices because we're learning the soul framework as part of Get Up Mode Challenge. Never coughed so much in a video before. I was like, it's super dry in the house. We're having sub-zero weather. It's, I think we're going on, I don't even know how many days in a row, probably nine, 10 days in a row, and we're expected to have some more. It was 24 below zero, just the temperature last night. I have no idea what the wind chill or the other factors involved were, but that's pretty darn cold in anybody's book. And uh, it's, it's causing the house to be super duper dry and very staticky, even with humidifiers running. It's uh, interesting, and it got in my throat. It was like rah, 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 gravel gertie tickle throat, which happens, right? That's the thing I love about live video. It is what it is. I, I caught in my video, oh my God, it's the end of the world. No, it's just, it is what it is. So poor get up and go challenge day 14 happened to have some coughing throughout, even with my heart coffee cup. Actually, my sister left this here the other day and I'm like, oh, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. The cool thing about COVID is we don't interact and see each other as often as we used to. So we get to borrow things longer than we normally would. So I want to thank Betsy for the amazing Valentine's cup that I've had in my videos today. I really like it. And, you know, thank Caribou because they have cute cups. Uh, but it is a really cute cup. And it's it's more for, than for just Valentine's Day because it's got multicolored hearts on it, not just pink or red. And even if it just had pink or red, you can use it whenever you want. Or just a little pick-me-up. One of my favorite things is to use different cups and different mugs based on my feeling and things for the day. And it, it helps to boost our happiness quotient, right? So NLP, I like to share that because NLP, N, <laughs> nominal group technique, NGT. See all these acronyms get confusing. But I like to share nominal group technique because it's something, it's a tool I learned in college and used a lot in corporate America in my jobs and in my own businesses to help me make decisions among alternatives. And it can be used for really complex decisions, for team decision making, as well as for individuals making a decision on a subjective thing that they want to make a more objective decision about. I don't know about you, but I always feel better about my decisions if it's not just what I feel like doing and if I can in some way, shape or form quantify that it's the best choice right now. Some things we just instinctively act and do, but a lot of things we want to take a deep breath, think, and make sure that we're, we're going down the road that we, we know is right for us at the time. And if my eight-year-old daughter can do it to name a puppy, then anybody can do it. And that means, and I think that's why it's one of the tools that I've used throughout my entire life, not my entire life, but probably since college. So for 50 years, maybe, not quite 50 years, let's say, 40 plus years I've used this strategy. And if I can use it in all those different applications throughout my life, then I think it's a good tool to share with people and, and make sure that they have it in their toolbox as well. I also like to remind myself that when I'm making a choice or when I'm making a tough decision, that I don't want to just consider my heart, my, my feelings. I want to consider my, my objective brain and thinking about the facts of the situation. And I also want to listen to my gut. I learned over a lot of very challenging situations that every time 
I've got an inkling or an instinct that something's wrong and I've ignored it, something really, really bad has happened. And so I like to make sure that I'm including all three aspects when I'm making any type of choice or decision. I do it in hiring decisions. I do it in, in letting people go decisions. I do it in business decisions, who I'm going to partner with. I even do it with who I'm going to interview for my podcast. You know, if something just feels off or not right, I don't inter I don't contact and I don't interview that person. I don't have them and expose them to, to my people if something seems off of, or, or not right. And it might just be, it's not the right time. Maybe they're the right person for the podcast and to you know share with my audience, but it's not the right time for that person to be on. And there's somebody else that needs to come first or something that needs to happen before that. And when I was younger, I had those intuitions and I had those inklings and I would let my head or sometimes I'd let my heart, or sometimes I'd let my head and my heart over rule out my my intuition. And whenever, seriously, I, I could tell you some really unbelievable stories about, you know, and hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Of course, when I was going through those situations, I, I would feel the intuition, but I would purposefully stuff it down and ignore it. And it wasn't until after the fact when the whole situation played out that I realized that, that there was a reason that I shouldn't have done the thing that I did. You know, I, I say in my marriage, I tell the story sometimes about <clears throat> on my wedding day, I was actually freaked out, petrified, and I'd been with my soon-to-be husband for two, almost three years, and had a beautiful son with him and I had for some reason an intuitive feeling that I should not go through with this I should not get married it was the wrong thing for me to do and you know lo and behold two kids 25 years later we got divorced well there was a whole lot of, of pain and, and sadness and and things that happened throughout my marriage because I didn't listen to my intuition that is one of the strongest senses I had that oh my god this is a mistake this is the wrong thing to do and I did it anyway because everyone was at the church I was putting on my wedding dress it was in my mind too late and I needed to do the right thing and the right thing was I had made a commitment to get married and I was going to get married and don't get me wrong there were amazing things in our marriage but there were also things that continually indicated that it was the wrong move for me until it blew up and you know you couldn't ignore it anymore uh, jobs. I've had jobs and business partners. Same thing. Looked good in paper. Felt good. Seemed like an amazing person. Only to find out, my intuition would say, mm -mm -mm -mm. "Yeah, it all looks awesome, but there's something off here." And it wouldn't be till you know you got in the partnership, were in business, and found out that the person's actual way of doing business and values didn't match ours or mine in in that in some situations or the job that I thought was presented in this way and the company was this way and this was their values and their morals. It's not until you get inside the organization and work in the organization that you really find out what's the culture, what's the values, what's what's their belief system and uh, what's the real corporate culture and environment like. And for the most part in my corporate career, I did a good job putting myself in organizations that were a good fit. But there were a couple of times when I got in and found out that certain things that they didn't even mention that were, you know, deal breakers for me. The whole um, over promise and under deliver thing I discovered working for an organization that the sales organization would promise the world to customers and we as an organization didn't have the technical capability to deliver the things that they promised. Well, what happens when you promise people something that you, you cannot possibly deliver. Lots of problems, lots of challenges that ended up uh, being my responsibility to fix and smooth over those situations. Didn't like it, didn't feel good, didn't want to be in that business. So that's why we need to listen to all three, our head, our heart, our intuition. Even if you don't think you have intuition, guess what? You have intuition. We are all built with feelings, instincts, and the capability to think, mindset, brain, thinking, right? We've, we're all born with those three things. We're not born with a whole lot of other things. We learn them all along the way. We are born with a head, a heart, and, and a gut instinct and intuition. And that's where our, I guess, fear is a feeling, so that's more our heart, but uh, we're, we're all equipped with that, even when we don't think that we are. 
So nominal group technique, <clears throat> get up and go challenge today was uh, the A of our SOAP framework about taking action. And I'm going through the SOAP framework with respect to relationships this time. Remember there's, I don't know if you remember, but we have talked about, or I've mentioned several times that there's seven key areas of our life and aspects of our life. And the things that we do, we need to make sure that we're paying a little bit of attention to all seven of them. Not the same amount of attention. Yeah, I could talk for a day on <clears throat> balance being complete and utter BS in my experience and my mind. Some people believe and teach balance. I think it's a crock. There is no such thing as balance in terms of how a lot of people define balance. Balance is different for each of us, just like everything else. But in each of these areas, we got to give them a little bit of attention or we'll get into trouble. I learned that by not paying attention to my physical well-being. I put everybody and everything first. I put finances and relationships and everything first before my physical well-being and had a sudden cardiac arrest and died. Why? Because I didn't pay any attention to taking care of me. And of course, since that event, I've had to switch that around and take care of me physically. Our physical well-being is, to me, the foundation of all these other things. But it's not just our physical, right? Because they're all connected. Our physical, our mental, emotional, our spiritual, our health, it's all connected. Our financial health is, of course, underpinning all of that as well. But it's all impacted by one another. So it's like this massive, convoluted mess of things that are interrelated. And if we're not paying attention to the interrelatedness as well as the individual components, we can get into trouble. Like <clears throat> there are people that focus 90 five percent on their physical well-being there are people that focus the same proportion on any one of these other areas and when we do that when we put too much emphasis on one area and at the expense and the neglect of others that other area of our life will do something to get our attention my physical well-being i was not paying attention to it and i wasn't not paying attention to it for just a little while i was not paying attention to it for like a couple of decades when i was raising my family building businesses my physical well-being my health my eating my exercise which was non-existent my consumption of water everything all the things that we need to do to maintain a sense of physical well-being i wasn't doing barely any of them i was doing the minimum to get by taking care of myself and that 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 got my attention I got my attention in ever increasing ways until I really paid attention to it and that this will happen in any area of our life any aspect of our life I would say uh, I, I would say all of them I wanted to say maybe not so much in contribution because that's a higher level uh, interaction or, or consideration for most of us as humans but really all of them if we are only focused on ourselves, only on ourselves, only on ourselves, and of course it's ourself first we have to love ourselves and take care of ourselves and have mental health and emotional health and spiritual health and financial health and, and healthy relationships first before we have anything to give to other people which is to me what contribution contribution is about what am I giving how am I sharing how am I showing up in the world to impact and influence things outside of me that's to me what contribution is but uh, all of these need to be taken into consideration and so that's part of what we talk about in the get up and go challenge as well we, we like to think and I learned this a lot I've had a really big dose of this as I've gone from the offline world to the online world there's a lot of focus in the online world on marketing sales marketing sales marketing sales and social media and branding and all this I call it superficial communication stuff not that communication is superficial but there's this huge emphasis on it like marketing and sales is 90% of the business and that everything else is just 10 and I don't know been in the real world the physical world a lot longer than the online world and I learned that yep sales and marketing is a component but it definitely isn't 90% versus 10%, at least not in offline businesses and in corporate America and in the real world. If you have put 90% of your emphasis on marketing and social media and branding and only 10% on the products and services and delivery and customer service and customer interaction and customer relationships and processes and procedures and systems, you are going to find yourself in, in big trouble. And so I've always kind of argued with that. I'm like, no, 
it's like all the different areas and aspects of our life. It's It's got to be a little bit more more attention to different areas and functions than that. So just like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships and contribution has to do with our life, we can think of these areas with respect to our business and different departments and different functions in our business. If you pay zero attention to the financial aspects of your business, 90% of sales and marketing isn't gonna necessarily take care of that for you. If you make a million dollars and pay no taxes or take no consideration into the tax implications and other financial implications of bringing in that million dollars, at the end of the year, you're going to find yourself in big trouble. Same is true of the spirit or the culture of your organization. You have to create that as you're going along, and that's a, a thing that underpins your entire organization. And again, that's why it's important to have a more uh, holistic and global approach to everything we do. I call it a systems approach. We have a systems approach to everything that we do, which means we're really, really flexible and flowing and open to the possibilities of how we do things. So that's a whole lot on head, heart, intuition, uh, nominal group technique, NGT. That was all from Get Up and Go Challenge today. Today, our idiom for supersize your business was you can lead a horse to water or coffee but you can't make him drink. And this is so true and uh, in everything, in every area aspect of our life, right? We can teach our kids the lessons that we think they need to learn and, and help them and teach them and show them and lead by example. But when it comes time for them to make a choice and a decision, it is still 100% up to them whether they're going to do it or not, whether they're going to make a choice or a decision, whether they're going to take an opportunity. We can offer opportunities and show people the way and we can teach them things that have worked for us, but if they're not ready or it's not the right thing or the right time for them, and a lot of times it might be the right thing that you're sharing with them, it might be the right system, the right process, the right procedure, the right thing, like SOAP framework, to me, it's always uh, applicable. But to people that are learning it in the Get Up and Go Challenge, they might be like, okay, that's cool, but it's not the right time for me to do this or learn this or figure this out right now. <laughs> That's true of everything and anything. You know, they say when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And it's so true. There's opportunities, endless possibilities floating around us all the time. But sometimes we feel like there's nothing. There's nothing we can do. There's no opportunities. There's no possibilities. Yet they're always there. But it's up to us to be willing to see them. It's up to us to be open to the possibilities, right? We can... And we often are exposed to the exact same environment, the exact same situation, the exact same opportunities as people right around us, yet they'll take advantage of the opportunity, they'll see the opportunity and run with it, and we won't, we'll just be stuck. We'll be stuck in our current situation because we're in some kind of a mode that makes us feel like we aren't capable of, of seeing that. And guess what? There's, there's bias. We all have bias and filters and our world will only let into it. Our vision will only see things that we're ready to see. All right, so that was super size your business. Lead a horse water, can't make them drink. If you've got a pet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can give the, the dog water, you can give the horse water, but the horse isn't gonna drink. I used to have a kitty cat that wouldn't do anything in front of me. She wouldn't eat, she wouldn't go to the bathroom, she wouldn't drink nothing. I would give her food, I'd give her water, and she would not eat a single bite or drink a single drink until I was not looking. I had to go away before she would drink. Because we all do things when the timing and the feeling is right for us. So we can't get all bent out of shape when other people don't do exactly what we want them to do. The only person we have control over is ourselves. The only person we can manage and have 100% responsibility for is ourself and so we can set things up we can create great environments for people but it doesn't mean they're going to take advantage of it maybe the timing isn't right for them maybe it actually isn't the right thing for them sometimes things that feel awesome for us other people are like yeah i'm never going to do that it's like sushi lots of people like sushi i don't i'm not eating it right lots of me i love caramels but i know there's people out there that don't love caramels and aren't ever going to eat them and that's, guess what? Perfectly all right. It doesn't matter one bit to me. And that's, I think, how we need to be about a lot of things. It's okay for other people to be themselves 
because by allowing other people to be themselves, I'm giving myself permission to be myself. And that's kind of my purpose these days is to make sure that it's okay for me to be me, but that means I have to let you be you as well. Uh, it's Valentine's Day today. I think I mentioned that. I did actually do some decorating in my background up high for Valentine's Day, but you can't see it and I can't even see it unless I go away and, and walk away. It's really, really high on my backdrop. But I did add some little hearts to my bears because I wanted them to feel festive. And that's actually a little monkey for my granddaughter that is five, but I'm not seeing her on Valentine's Day, so she'll have to wait till I see her next to get her little Valentine. I forgot to give it to her when she was here this week. I just forgot. She was over to meet my other granddaughter, my new granddaughter baby, and I forgot to give it to her. That happens. Grandmas forget. We all forget. So, Valentine's Day, nominal group technique. Oh, I know what I'm forgetting. I am forgetting that our 365 day do one thing every day that centers you challenge today was day 45 and it was all about our duty and it is our most urgent duty to return thanks to remember when somebody does something nice for us to be grateful and to actually thank them so i'm actually really enjoying the the centering challenges it's, it's one of those things where you focus on yourself and it isn't just physical mental emotional or spiritual or financial, it kind of covers the gamut. And I think that's why I like these little books. They're, they're sayings by famous people or they're activities. And every day, just like I do in my challenges, we talk about something or it shares a quote and then it challenges us to do something. So every day we just, today we're challenged to how I return thanks today. So <clears throat> how am I gonna return thanks today? If somebody does something nice for me today, it's Valentine's Day, maybe. How am I going to thank them? How am I going to return it? And I'm going to share it in the comments below. Some days I admit, most days I admit, I forget to share underneath that because once I get done posting my content in the morning, that's pretty much the end of my social media. I've got a whole lot of other things that I do throughout my days. And that's when I do, I create my content in the morning, post it, and then I'm pretty much done. And I forget, just like other people, to go back and post it. I do do my homework, but it doesn't mean I post it. So if you ever wonder, what I did for a particular day in any of my challenges. If I've forgotten to post it, just hit me up and ask. You can always ask and be glad to share what my action was, my, what my response was, what I learned, what lesson I learned from that particular challenge activity that particular day. Today, it's just a great reminder that we always need to remember to be so thankful and so grateful for the many things that people do for us. We forget and we especially those people close to us during COVID-19, it's really easy to take people for granted and that's when we need to love them the most. All right, that's it. Have an amazing day. If I can help you in any way, ask, hit me up in the comments below or direct message me. Again, I will see it. I might not see it immediately, but I'll see it and I'll get to it ASAP. Have an absolutely amazing day. Happy Valentine's Day and I'll be with you tomorrow.